Good morning. Welcome to Raw Online. Today's session is going to be on the male genital organ, the pens. So, as per the competency based medical education, this comes under the anatomy 46.3 and 46.5, where we are going to describe the penis under the following headings namely, the parts, the components, the blood supply, and the lymphatic drainage. We are also going to explain the anatomical basis of phimosis and circumcision, which are the most important clinical anatomy related to the topic of the day. So, penis we all know is a copulatory, male copulatory organ. Not only that, it is not just for the sexual intercourse, it harbors or rather a very important structure is present within the penis. It is the male urethra. Unlike the female component, the urethra in the male opens along with the sexual excretion within the penis. In females, the urethra is a separate opening when compared to the vagina, whereas in a male, the urethra is lodged within the penis and the opening is common for both the sexual secretions and for the micturition. Coming to the parts of the penis, the penis has a root just by name itself. The root is firmly anchored to the underlying perineum. The root continues as the body of the penis which is free and pendulous and it does not have any attachment. And finally, the terminal part of the body, extension of the terminal part of the body is called the glans penis, which is another part by itself, which has its own lymphatic drainage, which are of importance. We will see one by one in the subsequent slides. Now, as regards to the root of the penis, you can see here, it's depicted in the schematic diagram here. The root has two limbs, what you call as the crura. The singular for this is crus. Crus in Latin means limb. So, because it's like two legs, two limbs, they're called as crus of penis and the plural is the crura. So, it consists of two crura in the posterior aspect and a midline bulb which is called the bulb of the penis and together with the two crura of the penis and the bulb it constitutes the root of the penis. As you can see the crura is attached to the ischiopubic ramus. This is the pubic part of the ramus, this is the ischial part of the ramus. So, the ischial, ischiopubic ramus gives attachment to the crura of the penis just anterior to the ischial tuberosity, just in front of the ischial tuberosity. The bulb of the penis on the other hand is attached to the perineal membrane which is forming a partition in the perineal floor. Now, these two structures are not just the um, organs of penis they are in turn covered by two muscles. The crura is covered by ischiocavernosus because it is attached to the ischial part of the pelvis and it mainly helps, it uh, covers this crura which we later know is called as corpora cavernosa. We will be seeing in the subsequent slide. So, it is given the name ischiocavernosus. That muscle is enclosing this part of the crura of the penis in the root and as regards to the bulb of the penis, it is enclosed by bulbospongiosis muscle. So, these two muscles cover the root of the penis respectively the crura of the penis covered by ischiocavernosis, the bulb of the penis covered by the bulbospongiosis. Ischiocavernosis to a small part it extends to the body, but very small part, just the proximal part. Otherwise, these two muscles are limited to the root of the penis. 
traced in front from the root of the penis if you see the diverging crura in the root they converge together and form a single body and that continues as the apparently continues as a single body but then they continue as independently but attached in the midline and this attachment is more in the anterior aspect and the attachment in the posterior aspect is limited. So, the crust continues as the corpora which is called the corpora cavernosa and the bulb continues as the corpora spongiosum. This corpora spongiosum finally becomes the bulb of the pen, uh, glans penis also. So, it starts as a bulb ends as a glans penis in between is the corpora spongiosum. So, in this picture you can see this is the two crura joined in the to form the corpus cavernosum but in the posteriorly they will be still diverging and this is the bulb of the penis which continues as corpora spongiosum and finally ends as glans penis and you can see even the urethra entering into it that we will come to that later. So, this is another picture to show you the how the crura the cross penis is covered by the ischiocavernosus muscle which is attached to the ischial ramus and the bulb of the penis is covered by the bulb of the penis which is again will continue both are only to the proximal parts of the body otherwise they are restricted to the root of the penis.